she's a girl, like with a money fear. She so much so that she no longer sleeps alone. She sleeps with her mom or sleeps with me in my bed at 13 years old. She is not a confident girl. The boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend. Why? I don't know. Stefan Stearns has been in Madeline Soto's life since she was a seven-year-old girl. No wonder she had so many fears and was afraid to sleep alone per her grandmother. Maddie's mom, Jennifer Soto, posted a photo of Stearns and Maddie on Instagram as far back as November 22nd, 2018. The caption read, I love my little chosen family, heart emoji. Today was a pretty wonderful day. Happy Thanksgiving. Hashtag my cooking skills are on point. Even though Jennifer had reportedly just begun dating Stearns that year, she already considered him to be a part of the family and a man to be trusted around her daughter. They weren't married. I don't even know if they were ever engaged. But photo after photo shows trip after trip that the trio took. One photo from June 23rd, 2020 shows Maddie headed for the water in Venice Beach, Florida with a man who appears to be Stearns following closely behind her. There's a tattoo on the upper right side of his back, maybe some sort of family crest. The caption reads, the water was so nice and warm today with a beach emoji. Then on December 27th, 2021, Jen posted a photo at Mayaka River State Park. A 10-year-old Maddie appears to walk ahead of Stearns on a boardwalk. The caption reads, Mayaka was absolutely beautiful. Telemundo 31 released a new video on March 26, 2024, with additional footage of Madeline Soto's grandmother revealing more about Maddie's fears of sleeping alone. Titled Chronology of Events, one month after the Madeline Soto case, the video shows us a bit more from Yolanda Zambrano's interview, Uncovering Sleeping Habits. The link is below if you want to watch it in Spanish. They are releasing more information little by little. Unlike WFTV, who at first only released portions of their interview with Soto, and Stearns then later released more of their full raw interviews. Telemundo 31 is slowly revealing their raw footage. Once again, we see video of Stearns standing next to the same car he's accused of transporting Maddie's body inside of on Monday, February 26th. Stearns talked with cops the next night, Tuesday, February 27th. Jennifer walks towards the camera, holding her left hand in an awkward position. We hear more of what Maddie's grandmother has to say about Stearns being at the condo, even though he no longer lived there. She's a girl, like with so many fears, so much so that she no longer sleeps alone. She sleeps with her mom or sleeps with me in my bed at 13 years old. She is not a confident girl. No wonder Maddie wasn't confident with all the harm her mother's boyfriend would bring to her. But did Jen or Yolanda wonder why Maddie was so afraid of sleeping alone? The boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend. Why? Perhaps her grandmother peppered her with questions, and maybe Stearns threatened Maddie never to tell. Her boyfriend no longer lived there. He came this weekend. Why? I don't know. Yolanda could be truly befuddled as to why Stearns was at Jen's condo the weekend prior to Maddie's death. And which days over the weekend was Stearns there? Did Jennifer ever grill her daughter about what exactly was wrong? I know cases where one mother had suspicions of wrongdoings by her own husband against their children 
while she was at work, that mom quit her job, became a full-time mother, and only afterward she learned that her husband was harming their biological children. In a different case, a mother didn't learn about the mistreatment her daughter underwent until the girl revealed abuse she endured to a therapist. A horrible new case covered by Crime Online describes a man who wanted to adopt a baby simply to mistreat that infant. Was discovery the fear of Stearns and Jennifer? Had Maddie reached an age where she was no longer afraid to make an outcry or additional outcries to mandated reporters, if any others fell on deaf ears. Stearns may have found it easy to manipulate Maddie as a seven-year-old girl. After all, Maddie's world was smaller and she was more impressionable and easier to terrorize. But as six years passed and Maddie entered her teenage years, did she bravely say enough is enough? Did Stearns fear his fate if someone found out his secret did he get rid of her alone or work in concert with Jennifer? They say Maddie's mother is cooperating, but is she really? A single interview given to police then lawyering up doesn't necessarily sound like cooperating, but perhaps it's a smart legal move. Stearns has two new entries in his criminal case, even if a murder charge still has not been added yet. As of this recording, dated March 20th, 2024, there's a response to the notice of discovery, which is a written response to questions or requests for information or items made by the other side in a court case. There's also a state's response to demand for discovery. The body of Madeline Soto was found in a wooded area of St. Cass St. Cloud, where the suspect Stefan Stor's vehicle was also seen. Since then, uh, morning has reigned in the community. In the name of Jesus! In the name of Jesus! In Central Florida, that's Gerardo Bloa, who worked on very high-profile cases here, for example, the Casey Hunter case, and he indicated that it might be a strategy from the park, uh, the prosecutor's office conducting the autopsy of Madeline's body, it might be a strategy by the prosecutor's office to build a solid case against those involved. Ezekiel 1724, all the trees of the field will know that I, the Lord, bring down the tall tree, exalt the low tree, dry up the green tree, and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will fulfill it. 